Last round. Fight. Hello and welcome to the Last Round Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Saunders. Joining me as always, my co-host, Anton Austin. We're here today at Two Technical Muay Thai to speak with a guy who Muay Thai fights and is a music artist now, <laughs> Bilal Remesi. Thanks for coming. Yeah, man. Welcome. Thanks for having me on, man. Thank it's our you. pleasure. So what, what was your first introduction to Muay Thai and how long have you been training for? Um, well, I've been training for seven years now, on and off. I've had like a year gap sometimes three months to six months gap yeah but yeah for seven years and um it's one of my friends he was just like you're strong man you should come to the gym one time and try a bit of more so i was like i can't fight man i've had a few fights on the street but <laughs> nah that's it and then i went one day and went all powers gym where he was training his name's carl carl Etchels. he won't mind me saying his name yeah. and yeah he brought me to the gym and he was like just try it out, tried it out. I had fun and the coach was like, you're good, man, you're gonna come back. I said, yeah, he went, where's he? And then yeah. started there, <laughs> fell in love with it, I just fell in love with it from there. How long ago was that? About seven years ago, I say, yeah. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So what, obviously, Panikos is the main coach there. What's yeah. it like training under him? Well, he's, well, he's my friend as well, so. Do you think I that's important in the coach to be a like, um, friend as well? I don't think it's important, but, I think it's good that we are friends as well. Because yeah. in the beginning, it was obviously just coach and I was a student, he was my coach. Yeah. And then it's just developed over time. And then, but yeah, he's always just pushed me hard and got the best out of me. And that's why I've yeah. always had a lot of love and respect for Panikos. Like, every time I look him in the eyes, do you know when you look someone in the eyes and you know they've got your best interest? Yeah, and yeah, every yeah, time yeah. I step out into the ring, that's yeah. why I feel so confident. Because I know he wants me to win and wants me to do my best, so yeah. yeah. Plus, having him having such experience as well must be valuable for you, like. That's like, it speaks for itself, you know what I mean? He's yeah. had so many fights. It was already, my friends had shown me videos of his coach before I went. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh, this guy's a beast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I was looking forward to go to the gym before I went, so yeah, it was good. It was good, definitely. How would you, how does a typical training session go at all powers or well, in a fight camp? So oh, well, yeah, the typical session, um, it would start off inside the gym. Yeah. And then we'd just start off with like warm up stretches, mm. things like that. Maybe going to some drills, start off with like some shadow boxing or some basic drills yeah. and go to some pad work, maybe finish off with some sparring. But fight camp yeah. starts obviously from at home with your food. Yeah. <laughs> <But it> starts <laughs> off with about like two grapes. Yeah. <laughs> And a sip of water, and then you're in in the morning for a thing. Pan used to get me in sometimes. Now I realise he was getting me out of my comfort zone for a purpose, but yeah. he'd get me in sometimes at 5 a.m., right. sometimes at 6 a.m. So he'd come in and run, I'd be like, why? Five yeah, times, yeah. Why? But now I realise, you know, it's just keeping me sharp on my toes and my bar. So I'd come in at 6, and then we'd start off with a run. So I'd do like, it'd be like 3 to 5K, yeah. not, nothing too big. Come in, stretch her bit of a workout, maybe like bar joint press or set yeah. up, bit of pad work, then intense rounds, pad work. And then after that, the sparring. After that, it will always finish with three to 600 knees wow. and three to 600 teeps and um, 100 press ups, 100 sit ups, but in a row, but standardly. And but that was like, a, that was an easy fight camp right. there <laughs> as well. So that's just a general mm. fight camp. That's what they'll come in and do every day but obviously each time it would vary like work on whatever we wanted to work on for the fight yeah and it would change depending on what we were working on that day but so yeah, man. this is twice a day as well two yeah sessions twice a day so yeah one in the morning and then in the evening sometimes very rarely but sometimes free depending mm. on wow but mm. not to overdo it like if we was tired we'll come in and maybe just shadow technical, yeah. have a look around just technical do you know what i mean mm. just to tick over that's Some, interesting because it's, mm. it's quite like the um like the Thai way of training really, isn't it? Like twice a day doing yeah. runs, doing a lot of like bag work and stuff. Have you yeah. been to Thailand? I have once. I went for a month. You trained out there, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Every every day was amazing, man. It's good. Yeah. How I suppose it I was gonna say actually how it compares, but I guess it's pretty similar then in terms of how you train with Panikos then. Um I say yeah, it's similar, but still nothing in England compares to the training in Thailand. I say, yeah. I say you can't compare it if it's like that, but 
we try and simulate it as close as possible. Yeah. I'd say that panic us because as you know, you see how we fight and how we yeah. train is very authentic. It's very important because yeah. his instructor, um, this is was Paul Tight, okay. and he used to own the gym before Panica. Right. And he's very strict about technique yeah. and that <laughs> everything you do is authentic. Yeah, so it's if been it's passed not, down almost. Basically, if it's not, yeah. you just look at it and go, that shit. <laughs> and it won't beat around the bus, yeah. you know what I mean? And they say, do it like this. Yeah. And that's what I love about it, though. They was very specific about what they wanted and how they wanted it. It went, just do what you want. They mm. did care about what they was teaching, so I knew I was in the right place. Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds like an mm. important thing to yeah, have in a definitely. coach. Isn't it? Definitely. Mm. definitely. Panikos as well, he's, he's fighting on the top organization one championship he's mm. had endless fights in the uk he's i Beast, think he's, he's fought he's fought almost everyone in the uk <laughs> and he's, 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 I think, oh, he's beat he's beat uh, yeah most of it in so the uk yeah man he's i think what? you're in a you are definitely in a good place and mm. you know big up panicos yeah man he's a top, he's a top Pan, man. No flow. um mm. what would you say has been your um best highlight or achievement so far on your muay thai journey um my best highlight or achievement i'd say um Fighting at such a high level so fast, I'd yeah. say, and I know that's only due down to my gym and my coach. Because mm. I mean, I only had one fight with shin pads on. Yeah. And then <laughs> Pam was like, "You're not fighting with yeah. shin pads again." She's <laughs> like, "Free you so in, silly, it? mate. Like, yeah. what are you doing?" Then I had like, I had one C class. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's just been B and A class from then. So it was really good, yeah, do you know. I la- at first I was thinking, because my first fight, do you know, I fought the number, I think it was number one at the time. Right. I was number one, that is from Shin Kick Gym. I can't remember the name, I'm really sorry. But I didn't know to the end of Pan's like, oh, is that my third ever fight? Yeah, right. I fought in Shin Pads and I see that I fought this guy fought from Shin Kick. I thought, who's this guy? about six foot. I thought, yeah, man, I can do this, I can do this. First round went in, Ugh, one bump. Oh, he's like that holding his nose. Yeah. And I thought, yes. Second round, gassed out. Third round, fourth round, got beaten up. No, no, no. Fifth round, nearly got my face kicked off. <laughs> and I was like, I told you, but at the end, like, I lost, yeah, I got battered, yeah, 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 yeah. basically. Yeah. Just got through the fight. I, like, I told you, Pan, I'm not that good at this. He's like, that guy was number one. I'm like, oh, wow. what? Because he used to be number one, or I was number yeah. one at the time. I was like, and he goes, you went in the distance, you went, it's only your third fight, so see it as a good thing, so. Yeah, definitely, I think mm. we've had other guests on previous, haven't we, and we've talked about a lot of junior experience, yeah. I think for even like myself, I can relate to you, like, having one fight with the shin guards, N-class fight, and then jumping straight up to A-class, like, <laughs> you've got to give yourself a pat on the back, because yeah, yeah, some people have done it since a young age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've had a load of amateur experience. They've been on the end of, you know, lost losing fights nah, definitely, and stuff man. and, you know, jumping in it there. It's yeah. definitely, you know, a big, big yeah, achievement. Man. I shout out my gym, man. Gym and my coach, definitely, man. Because made me realise how important it was getting to this level. Hmm. So quick, so to say. Yeah, a lot definitely. of people, and without a childhood fighting background yeah. or anything. I definitely. I think you've got to have a lot of heart and determination and, again, a good Definitely. coach behind you. Yeah, yeah. Gonna someone's going to push you for the yeah. best. Yeah. My next question is a bit of a two-parter, really. So do you prefer the three-round or five-round format, and which ones do you think suits your style better? Well, that's a, I'm glad you asked me that, because my fight with Prince from here yeah, my was my free. first ever three-round, mm. which a lot of people didn't know. And, you know, I've started off like, Style, yeah. you know, nice and all that. Think about it. Jab and teach this round. See what he's gonna come with. Yeah, yeah. And now it's the prince come hopping <laughs> in like, hey, yeah. oh, oh, hand in the face, yeah, and, that. and yeah. I was like, and then obviously it was a bit like because I've only yeah. fought five round fights yeah. before yeah. Mm. and full A class round. It was like it was a bit fast start for yeah. me. Yeah. So it was a bit of a shock the pace that he was starting for. Whoa. Yeah. I was a bit worried about, I'd like, right, I've got to pace myself here, and then boom, and next thing you know, I was getting up off the yeah. floor, just mm. seeing a white light, like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah, just seeing a white light, <laughs> like that. Like, like. Looked around, was like, yo, it's MTGP, oh, it's a good show, this, you know. <laughs> then I realised, I'm fighting, I was yeah. like, yo, he's got up, like, tried to style it out a bit, yo, couldn't see a bit, start, blinked a bit, just seen Prince like this, waiting for me in the corner, I was like, okay. And then he's come at me again, and I just held on. Mm. But anyway, yeah, so basically, it's a lot three rounds start. was a yeah. new to me. Yeah. And that's how I found out mm. the hard way with yeah. an elbow and a knee to the. And between me and you, actually fractured my eye socket. That right. Part. 
So that exactly. elbow like put me down. I think the knee on the way down woke me up. So thank right. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Prince, so. no, it's definitely a good fight. It's Obviously, good. we're close gyms as well, and we know each other personally. A so lot of love, man. It's always an awkward one, you know, but it's a I part of the game, mm-hmm. innit? And I'm saying you got the result on the night. Yeah, man. Got a lot of love for Paul as well, yo. Yeah. Man. They got Paul. But, love, but yeah, so what we were talking obviously the with the five rounds and the three rounds. Going into that fight, or even if you went into another three round fight. How do you think that has an impact on your training or like, does it have a, you know, when you're sitting down with Panikos and you're thinking, right, I'm going to fight this person, it's mm-hmm. three rounds, do we go in a bit faster or what mm-hmm. was your preparation like? Well, like, my preparation was, um, it was good. It was like them, my normal preparation for right. other fights. Yeah. But obviously we were just like, it's not as many rounds. So, you know, we might have to, to work, work a few a different things. Yeah, right. You know, if I say work, you know, we're going to have to work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I get if you we up. have to come back, we have to come back strong. Yeah. You know, if we're ahead, mm. we still have to kind of work because it's short, you yeah. know, we can yeah. change so yeah, fast. Yeah, and yeah, such a, yeah. Yeah. So it was just more them kind of tips. And listening to you call them, obviously. Yeah, man, definitely. Yeah. The most important thing, listen to me. Because we've had, again, we've had guests and we talked about Muay Thai and the scoring and obviously the later rounds being the bigger rounds. Mm. So I think it's always interesting to ask fighters who have experienced three rounds, mm. you know, how they go about it and how would they strategically win a fight. Because yeah. if, you, if you blow yourself out for the first two and then the last round you get stopped. I definitely um, wanted to end good. Because yeah. I think it's as important to start and start good, but okay, I think it's very good. important to finish good as well. Yeah. So the both just equally as important. Yeah. Is it a one minute rest as well? Um, is it a yeah, it was one minute. Yeah, I was so sh- so short like rest. thirty seconds, but yeah, yeah I think it's yeah. one minute. Yeah. But it was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I had fun, and that was the most important. I would like to do it again, definitely. Gene. I would train differently though. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, you know, fighting on Muay Thai Grand Prix, fighting on Yakau, you know, you fought, you fought against Carl Upton. Mm. That was a good win on Yakau. Mm. You fought a lot of the top guys around mm. your weight, and like you said, you're still fairly new in a sense. Yeah, you know, yeah, you've yeah. not been training that long, you know, and mm. um, you've, you've, beat, you've, you've beat, you beat Carl, you beat Prince, you've also fought James. Yeah, James Ogden. Fr- yeah. yeah, pick up James from... Yeah, man, he's a top guy. Look, he's a wicker guy. Camp. From wicker um, camp. Wicker camp, yeah. Sheffield. Yeah, good technical Top fight, guy man. as well, yeah. man. Lovely guy. Shout out James, man. Yes, um, man. So, you know, where do you see yourself? Obviously, at the minute, you've got other stuff going on. Where do you see yourself um, in that in that division? And for your Well, basically, um, it was weird because when James Ogden left, he was number one in the UK. Right. And he left the... Um, fight scene like yeah, for probably personal reasons yeah and then when we fought it was his fight back his comeback fight and i was like looking forward to it you know and it mm. was like definitely the most experienced and best fighter i've personally Chef stepped into the yeah. ring with and mm. I, I had to train really hard for that fight and i knew i would have to train and when i met him it was like before the fight we just got on so well it was yeah. like we were already yeah. mates and then yeah he, don't help, does it? Like, no. oh, yeah. It's better like when you're a bit like, you don't get on a bit, yeah. but we got on, we're like, you're all right, mate. Like, we're trying to give Bertrand a bit of stare. We just smiled at each other. Ended up just hugging each other, like, yeah, good luck, man, mate. I'm like, all right, see yeah. you later, mate. Yeah. And it was like, oh, now we're mates as well. Yeah. But it was the same after the fight, nothing but love. You know, my missus met up with his missus. We just all chatting together. The, I think the Muay Thai scene is quite like that. It's quite mm. like camaraderie based, isn't it? Mm. Like, there's not a lot of like, you know, trash talk like it is in boxing no. or yeah, anything like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, d- do you have aspirations to fight again? Then, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm just at the moment. I've got a few other plans, personal business plans. What I've been trying to sort out. A few people know, a few people don't. But um, yeah, I'm going to try to sort out my personal outside of the gym life. Yeah. And then definitely, man, I can't wait to get back. As you can see, I just started yeah. running again. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah I noticed that. Even. Man, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm ready, man. Running. Do you know what I mean? I'm always. That's the thing with me. It's like. It's like Pan's always taught me to like always stay ready. Yeah. Even if you're not ready, take over. Yeah, you know, definitely. don't ever just do nothing. So mm-hmm. I've always kept on my press with my sit ups, and as you see, I started back my running. I'm always yeah. shadow boxing and that. How would you describe mm-hmm. the, um, the the style of all powers and what Panikos Pasilla is very obviously authentic and you know his mm-hmm. his 
the former um, owner, is it Paul? Yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah. very strict and, you know, it's got to be on mm. point and stuff like that. A bit like Paul, to be honest. He's, he's very... You know, yeah, know, yeah. Well, how would you point. describe the All Powers? Would you say you've got a, a style or is everyone individual or would you know, is anything you... Um, i say we do have an overall style, mm. but I think everyone's an, their own individual, obviously. Yeah. But the overall style, i say it's more counter, but yeah. i say it's more counter-aggressive. Yeah. More than counter and score. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. Like, it's hard to explain. I won't say it's all forward, forward. I won't say it's all back, back. Yeah. It's I say it's a right nice end. mixture of both, but I th- would say it's more counter style. Yeah, definitely. Mm. That's good. <clears throat> so I was wondering um, what your perspective is on weight cutting in combat sports, and do you personally have to cut a lot of weight when you're when you're training for a fight? Look at yeah, this man. <laughs> I have to <laughs> stop the jelly babies. That's the worst thing. But yeah, this um, sweets and chocolate. Um, that's one of my worst things about mm. I like when I go in the shop I just used to buying them so yeah man that, when it's like weight cutting time it's like I have to be strict myself I have to only drink this no fizzy stuff fruit in the morning but yeah I have to lose about sometimes 7 or 8 kilo the yeah. most I've ever lost I had to lose about 12 because I fight at 76 yeah. and sometimes I've, uh, if I'm not fighting if I've not got a fight lined up I like to eat after my fights. Yeah. If I've got one lined up, I like to keep professionals. Mm. I keep the diet on. I have a treat day or treat week, sorry. Yeah. And then go back to it. But if I've not got a fight lined up, I'd have a treat fortnight. Yeah. Or something, you know what <laughs> I mean? What's um, Panikos' views on cutting weight? Do you have, you know, we spoke to Kev, didn't we? And he was Kev talking Alpha, about yeah. test weight cuts and mm. the juniors don't cut no weight at all. And mm. some fighters, you know, like you said, you've got quite a lot of muscle mass. You mm. know, you, you're in good shape when you fight. Some fighters can cut more than others, you know, not no, everyone definitely. can do seven or eight kilos, you know. They no, might yeah, I understand it. that, man. Well, what it was like, he always kept health and safety first. So right, yeah. what it was is, because of his experience, he could just look at you and his experience will let you know, look, mate, I think water weight-wise, it'll be safe for you to lose that about this much. Yeah. And the rest will work off. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like mean, me, if I thought I could only lose like a couple of kilos. There's nothing no, on not me even that with you, yeah, mate. Yeah, I'd say about a kilo. Already, yeah. yeah, about a kilo. <laughs> even then, that's probably pushing it. Yeah. yeah. I'd probably just fire my walk around. Yeah, muscle. Yeah, muscle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I man. Think that's, um, I think that's definitely an area, you mm-hmm. know, we speak with a lot of people, isn't it? Weight mm-hmm. cutting. Yeah. And, um, it's such an important thing of the sport as well. Like, like Kev said, everyone has to go through it. But mm-hmm. obviously no one enjoys weight cutting. <laughs> nah, it's, it's not. And again, Pan, with one championship, they do the hydration test and stuff yeah, like that. It's very that's very good, though. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's, me, it's looking after your health yeah, first. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's not like, like anyone can try and kill themselves to make weight, but I'm glad that that organisation has said, right, we've set up a method where it's actually safe for a human to yeah. cut weight. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's more like looked at and it's, you know, yeah, definitely. Definitely the way forward, anyway. So what do you think about the purses in Muay Thai? Do you think that fighters are underpaid, underachieved? Nah, look mm. at me, man. I'm a millionaire. I'm a <laughs> definitely, man. Oh, my days. We're risking our lives in yeah, there. You yeah. know what I mean? And then for people to say, yeah. When I first started, um, can you see prices? Yeah, sure. See what yeah, man. Like. Like, when I first started, obviously, I'm not going to put no promotions or anything to him, but like... Mm. As much as they're getting all the people together for the show, and you know, I respect all the show organizers, organizations, mm. all of them, the big ones to the small ones, because yeah. they all play the part. But what you gotta remember is that people that are actually stepping into the ring are risking their lives mm. and you know their future. Yeah. Mm. So I think when you consider that compared to the purses, it's not good. No. When you understand the Muay Thai um, scene as a whole, it makes you realise a lot of organisations are not making a lot of money. Some mm. are even making losses to put on the shows. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to respect that also. And that's where, to me, it comes in where I wouldn't fight Muay Thai for the money. Yeah. And I'm glad that that got stuck in me from earlier. Pan already said, Pan was very honest with me in the beginning. He said, you know, until you like fighting top, top level, like say his level, mm. you know, it's not much no money, money yeah, in yeah, yeah, I think that's good for him to... Mm. to and he put it on me, he didn't trick me into it and say, yo, in three or four years, yo, you're going to be rich, yo, yeah, or anything, yeah. do you know what I mean? But yeah. I enjoyed it. And don't get me wrong, every time I got paid, we've, we've, we've hustled a bit, we've got a bit more, yeah. and then 
you know, it, it had to be enough for me to feel like, yeah, I'm willing to yeah, yeah. have fun in there. Because to me, it wasn't like I'm willing to risk it. It was me. I to, Muay Thai to me is fun. I enjoy yeah. it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense doing something you don't enjoy just for money to me. Mm. I enjoy it, so I thought I'm gonna, I want, I want, I want to fight anyway. Yeah, do you know what I mean. If it really came down to it, I'd fight for free. <laughs> don't tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the purses are low. There should be more. Definitely, <clears throat> we're risking our lives. We're putting on a show. These elbows can hit anywhere. Yeah, hit you in the frigging eye and you're blind. Do you know yeah, I mean? definitely. Hit you in the head, break. So, so. Like we talk, you know, we spoke to a few guests. We talked about starting out around five hundred pounds for an A class fight. Mm. You know, if you're comparing that to an MMA, I don't know the purses that MMA fighters uh, get. You know, I know the top level they're getting. Really yeah, good, a lot more, a lot more, man. But yeah, man, I personally wouldn't fight for that much. Mm. No, like, what do you think? What do you think um, defines a fighter who can, you know, almost worth a higher amount? So, say for example, you're the number one in the UK. Mm. Are you worth? Um, eleven hundred pound. You know, if you're a WBC <coughs> champion, you worth. Mm. How do you think? You know, because we, we've had guests on here. We've talked about they fought for these positions. Uh, this person was this much, and they only got offered that. Mm. And it's it is quite you know it's eye opening, especially to the audience, because I get people myself who go, you know, how much do you get for your fight? Yeah, like, I know. Or, Can you sort me some free tickets? I and know. Like, and they, they don't understand. They don't they understand. Free tickets. I'd be like, yo, man, eating. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. like I said, I think it's very important that you got a good coach, and he explains to you the ins and outs mm. of it. So when you're coming into the game as a freshman, a newbie, a student, yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's explaining to you a lot. If you don't quit your job, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, don't quit just yet. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just someone who's honest yeah. with you. With you, you're the number two, aren't you? I think yeah, in, yeah. The, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah number yeah. two, so you know, you you, you one place off the off the number one. And yeah, I don't even know who's number one at the moment, and I'll be honest with you, why that rankings is like yeah, it's, it's like just it's relating like casino. that you know. Yeah, like, it's like gambling. One yeah. day you look at it, yeah. Number two, tomorrow I could look, I'll be number eight. Yeah. So I like to fight for names, not yeah. for. Yeah, it's I true like that because like that's definitely what Paul says. Paul says the uh, same. Yeah. I checked it like a couple of weeks ago in your in your weight class, and mm. you was like number four or five, mm. and I don't think you're in the top ten. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. So do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So you understand? Yeah. So with me, like like I said, my coach explained to me when I first mm. said he said, look, um, round here we don't. I'm going to be honest with you, we're not fighting for belts, we're not fighting for, you know, we're fighting to be the best we can be yeah. ourselves. I want you to be the best you can be, best fighter you can be. I'm trying to be the best fighter I can be. So that's why I think it's very important to have, that I had an active fighter as yeah, a coach yeah, as yeah. well for me. Yeah. Because he was leading by example, <clears throat> not just by words. Or he was going in the ring, showing us what to do physically. I think that's a lucky thing for like me again. I can mm. share that experience having Paul. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, he's not as active as, as he'd like to be, but, yeah, yeah, but I've got him. I've got him <laughs> at his peak, and he's sharing the ring with these world class exactly. guys. You know, there's the people twenty Priceless. years from now who probably won't get to see some of the stuff Priceless, I've seen. I think so. Yeah, and that's not taking away um, no one who gets taught by someone with good no, experience. No, not at all. Never. I think that's just good for me. Yeah. As people have different learning styles, I think it was good for my yeah. Yeah. learning style. Also, with both of you as well, you're quite lucky in the sense that you've got like established coaches who are established fighters as well, mm. who like have a bit of pull with the organisation, you know, mm. to try and get you both like a bit more no, or whatever when it comes yeah. to getting yeah, paid. Yeah, that, that can help. No, yeah. definitely. Like you say, it's not what you know. Who you know. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Same with Muay Thai, man. Yeah. Yeah, same. Same definitely. with everything, isn't it? So you just asked him about MMA briefly. I was wondering, have you ever considered it? Is it something you'd like to transition um, into? Yeah, man. Well, before actually, I had two MMA fights. They were like just amateur fights, but mm. I won them. And I also have had MMA inter clubs. Go with, for a takedown. All powers, all powers. Did you go for a takedown? Nah, no. I, I was doing <laughs> def takedown defenses. Yeah, yeah. Just brawling. And yeah. I've got a very strong legs and strong base, so it was yeah. hard for him to um, get me down. It's very mm. important, I noticed. But <clears throat> to be honest with you, a little thing, yo, that's my next. I'm looking to fight MMA. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm definitely going to fight Muay Thai again, mm. but MMA is 100% on the agenda as yeah. well. A lot of people have asked, you know, why don't you try it when you try it? And when I tell them I've tried it, like, well, how did you do that? I did quite well. Mm. And at the gym, we had a lot of big fighters. Remember our pals yeah, like Kane, Brendan, Lerone, Brendan, Lerone, Brendan. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I sparred with them on a daily basis. Yeah, high regular, level. high level MMA. Did so, Kadeem train at your gym? Who? Kadeem. 
Kadeem, yeah, he did. Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, known man. him since I was like five Kadeem years old. Kadeem is man. a top guy, yeah, man. He's a good Close guy. friend of mine yeah. as well, man. Him and Ryan, man. Good yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, Ryan, yeah. yeah we've got man. Ryan as well. <laughs> good friends. Do man. you think that Thai fighters as a whole transition well into MMA, or do you think, like, obviously they're too focused on stand up? Um, I think they transition very well. I think they transition very well, yeah. I think one championship is a good example of that. Because mm. a lot of the, especially Eastern fighters, a lot of them that did stand up either did kickboxing or Muay Thai first mm. before they did MMA so and now how they won one one championship so is scoring they want the action they want the knockouts yeah, yeah. I think it's more important that you've got a good striking background yeah, as well yeah that's very true yeah, even well Fabio Pinker I think he's going into MMA you know Pinker I mean? like world champion yeah, multiple you know going into there it'd be mm. dangerous for a lot of them. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> So we've been listening to music. Boom. I take away your sins, no past off, past off. Cause I got an X like fat top. Yeah, I was digging on my crops, no track top. I might take away your piece of track top. Yeah, let's talk music now. <laughs> is it something that you've always done, wrote bars, or is it something like completely new to you? Um I I'm I've never I'm not I'm not completely new to it. I've been writing and rapping for years and years since a kid. But I've just stopped for years as well. Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah. whilst I was fighting, I just focused on my yeah. fighting. But I wanna do better at this, I've got a Definite for stuff. Yeah. For the last like 10, 11 years, not done anything. And then one day I was at the studio with my friend, and he's like, Oh, remember when you used to run? I was like, Yeah, he's like, You should start rapping. And ended up doing the trap there at Old One. They're like, Yo, this is a banger. Like, you might as well do more. Then it just went from there, really. Yeah. And now I've got radio shows and that coming up. So, yeah, yeah man. Remise0161 <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah, go follow that. Yeah. Is that something that you want to pursue like full time, or is it just a kind of a side hobby um, for you? Like I say, bro, right now for me, it's about the future and my family. Mm. I'm secure in that department now. I think I've gone through the fun phase of my life. Yeah, I've had yeah. fun, I've enjoyed it, I've had my fights. I'm definitely going to fight again, like I say, but it's just about securing outside of what I enjoy. And yeah. then um, it's about securing what I love now, which is my family first. And obviously yeah, definitely. securing that side and then time to have some more fun again after that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Is there any sponsor, anyone that you'd like to shout out? Um, sponsors? Well, not really, no. But I haven't. I don't have any at yeah, the moment yeah, because yeah. I'm not. You know, we're not. No, active. Yeah, 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 so yeah, I yeah. normally ask for sponsors as I'm going. But any fights. producers, anyone you're working with, music wise? Um, oh, or? music wise, yeah, man. Shout out my boy, Legendary Keys. Yeah. Um, I saw him in one of your videos. Yeah, yeah banging some of them beats of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. He's well. That's my neighbour as well. Right. Um, as I say. We're both working together. We gotta get to the top, innit? Yeah. That's it. Well, the reason why I asked about sponsors is because I was curious how how easy do you think it is to find sponsors in the Muay Thai game? Do you think it can be difficult? Um, I think it can be very difficult mm. because, like boxing, and if you say MMA or boxing, a lot of people have heard of it, and yeah, yeah. a lot of outside organisations. A lot of the time, I've said to people Muay Thai, and they've gone. Yeah, what's, what's that? that? Karate? <laughs> or is yeah. it uh, is yeah, that yeah. kickboxing? Yeah, kickboxing. Like, no, it's <laughs> Muay Thai. Yeah. Like, is it kickboxing? Like, no, it's Muay Thai. So kickboxing is kickboxing. So there's elbows, knees, mm. clinch, you know. So, yeah, I think it's due to... Also like, the television as well. Not yeah, being, I was going to say, I think it's due to yeah. social media, or media in general. It's yeah. not as televised. Yeah. It's not as out there, so... <clears throat> That's probably why the purses are like the way they are, really, because mm. fighters' profiles aren't really as aren't really that big are they definitely like you've, in terms of like following you've only really got like you know the big guys like Haggerty and Liam who are like you yeah. know drawing in big followers mm. big numbers definitely man shout out to them guys there yeah. definitely man especially Liam man top guy man. man yeah yeah I think it is is difficult for the fighters um, obviously social media Instagram has massively helped the sport I think there's a lot of channels now you're pushing fighters, mm. reposting videos, knockouts, fights, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah, in terms of sponsors, boxing. yeah, big up Cyan Boxing. Yeah, man, shout out. Um, yeah, also, is it Killer Lifestyle? Yeah, Killer cool. Lifestyle, yeah. big up them. That's uh, one thing that we're trying to do, though, with this, in it, that like, like, we're trying to give fighters kind of a platform to when they, you know, and they're promoting themselves, to when they go to these companies and they're trying to give them like 200 pounds, they can say, well, no, because I'm draw X amount of views like I've gained yeah, so many amount of followers since the last time I fought I'm, I'm worth more than £200 for this that's the you fake followers you don't want no fake followers and that's followers. why before <laughs> when we were talking about um, the shows I didn't want to I wasn't slagging off any promotions I was no. saying like 
a lot of them are making losses yeah. to put on these short yeah. stages for us. Yeah. So that's why I like I will, I'm not one of them stuck up fighters about oh you're only offering me that much. I'm not fighting. Mm. That's not me. Mm. I love fighting, so I will fight if I think the opponent is worth it. Wor- yeah, yeah a good fight. A good fight for me. So yeah, anything else you'd like to add about your music? Where can people find it? Um, yeah, man, on YouTube, it'll be at Official Remesis, Spotify, iTunes. It's in all the stores, actually. My songs are now in all the stores, so you can send a purchase and yeah. only 99p as well. <laughs> yeah, support that. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I've obviously had the chat off camera, some of them are hard, bro. man, yeah, proper. So, um, yeah, check him out. And again, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much, that, man. Bro. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you again soon.